All right, so alcohols, um, remember they have the hydroxyl group in them. Um, that's how we know it's an alcohol. It makes the molecule polar on the side that has the hydroxyl group on it, which then increases the solubility in water. Combustions of alcohols is the first main reaction that alcohols undergo. The amount of energy released increases as it gets larger because you have more carbon dioxide molecules being produced. And if you look at the amount of energy um, needed to break and form the bonds, you'll see that the more CO2 molecules are produced, the more energy is released. And it can also undergo incomplete combustion. And you're gonna notice that when it says limited oxygen. So just make sure you read the questions carefully. In my picture, I have methanol on the left and ethanol on the right. And you can see that the ethanol um, looks like it's giving off more energy because it is the larger molecule. So what would it look like if you had the reaction? So if we had methanol and the amount of oxygen was not limited, it would undergo complete um, combustion. So we would form CO2 in H2O. To balance it, we have one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, so we would put a two there. That gives us two plus two oxygens for four, and on this side we only have three. <clears throat> so one of the tricks um, that you can do is to make the um, alcohol an even number of oxygens. So if we put a two in front of there, then we would need to balance the carbon that also gives us eight hydrogens, so we would need to put a four there. Four plus four is eight. Well, we already have two, so we would just need six more. If it was in limited oxygen, um, then we would have an incomplete combustion, and so we would have CH3OH reacting with oxygen to form carbon monoxide and water, and we'll make a note that this is limited oxygen so that we know that it's an incomplete combustion forming CO. To balance it, one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, so we would need to put the two there. That gives us three oxygens, one and two is three, <clears throat> so then that's balanced. The other major reaction that alcohols undergo, you have combustion, but then you also have oxidation. And oxidation of alcohols, it really depends on what type of alcohol it is, whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. <clears throat> so that's important to know um, what determines if it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. So remember primary, you would have the hydroxide um, on a carbon that has two hydrogen atoms as well. So it would be some carbon bonded with two hydrogens and then your hydroxide. So the fourth bond is bonded to the chain. The other thing to note is um, that they need oxidizing agents and your oxidizing agent is typically dichromate. Um, it could also be manganate, but dichromate is typically used for the oxidation of alcohols. Sometimes you're gonna see it written um, with a O in parentheses. Um, so that's not oxygen, that is representing the oxidizing agent. Um, sometimes they ask about a color change. Dichromate is orange, bright orange, and then it reduces down to chromate 3 ion, which happens to be green, so it would go from orange to green. Now for primary alcohols, there's actually two steps to this. In the first step, you take your primary alcohol and you form an aldehyde, which means you have that double bonded oxygen on the end. So that's the first step. And then in the second step, what happens is you form <clears throat> carboxylic acid. So you still have that double bonded oxygen, and then you have that um, hydroxyl group as well. So you're going from an alcohol with a hydroxyl group to an aldehyde to carboxylic acid. Now we can collect those two different products. So say you have a primary alcohol and you want to collect the enaldehyde. How you do that is you would um, heat up the solution. So this is our 
primary alcohol right here. In this flask, we start heating it up at a low temperature and the enaldehyde is going to boil first because it has a lower boiling point. And so when it turns into a gas, it flows down this tube through the condenser. The condenser is um, just a tube and surrounding that tube is cold water. And so the gas then condenses into a liquid and we can collect that enaldehyde at the end. So by boiling it at a low temperature, we can collect the enaldehyde and kind of stop it from forming that carboxylic acid. If we wanted to then obtain the carboxylic acid, then we would just um, have it exposed to that reducing agent like the dichromate for a long period of time, and we would use reflux. So you have distillation, which is the setup on the left, and then reflux, which is this system set up on the right. And this is what you kind of saw in the um, boiling point lab that we did. You have a condenser, um, you have your solution in here, you're heating it up, it's for a long period of time. So as it heats up, the gas travels up and then it condenses and comes right back down to heat back up. And so you're kind of creating this loop until all of that alcohol is turned into the carboxylic acid. Okay, if it's a secondary alcohol, um, that would mean your hydroxyl group is on a carbon that has one hydrogen. So it would be have to be in the middle of a chain and you would have a hydroxyl group and then one hydrogen coming off of it. So this would not be at the end of a chain. Um, and so the example here is isopropyl alcohol. Um, that is the common name uh, for propyl 2-all. Um, the color change again is green, orange to green because you still have to have that dichromate um, oxidizing agent in order for this to take place, which is shown right here. Remember, group one elements are always aqueous, so we can kind of ignore that and just look at it being the dichromate ion. Um, it's also typically in the presence of an acid, so that's why the H plus is sitting down there. And so what happens is that secondary alcohol becomes a ketone. So you're taking the hydroxyl group, the hydrogen kind of leaves, and you get that um, double bonded oxygen. So you're making a ketone. So secondary alcohols make a ketone. Now tertiary alcohols, your hydroxyl group is on a carbon with no hydrogens. Um, it's not very easily oxidized because you would have to break up some of the carbon skeleton. Um, so there's actually no reaction for tertiary alcohols. So there's no color change occurring. All right, let's look at two examples. So the problem might say write the reaction for the following alcohol when they're mixed with the dichromate. So there is your reducing agent and then it's also being heated. So the first one we have is 2-methyl propane 2-all. Um, you have to make sure you know if this is a, there shouldn't be an either, um, make sure to know what type of alcohol this is, primary, secondary, or tertiary, so it might be helpful to draw it out. We have prop, which means three. On the second carbon, we have a methyl group. And then on the second carbon, we have the hydroxyl group as well. So that would mean that this is a tertiary um, alcohol. So there's going to be no reaction. And we're done with that. In the second example, we have the propanol again. Um, this time the hydroxyl group is on the first carbon, so we could write it like that, or you could have the hydroxyl on the other end. It didn't, doesn't matter which end you have it on. So as it's um, being added to that oxidizing agent, and then we have heat added to it, what will happen is we will form our enaldehyde. So we would have our chain of three carbons, and instead of having that hydroxyl group, um, we would have that double bonded oxygen. And so we go from being propen one all to being propanol, propanol. Um, we don't need a number because that double bonded oxygen has to be on the end. If we continue to heat it, all right, and maybe collect it in reflux, 
so sometimes you might see the word reflux there, um, you would continue to oxidize it down to or carboxylic acid. And so we would have that set up. This is coming off of the carbon there. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Um, and so this would be propanoic acid.